some time back I posted a post about how if your pastor says it's not okay to drink you should find a new church now, this was in reaction to a meme that I saw online which said the opposite that is if your pastor says it's okay to drink you should find a new church my argument was that Jesus made six barrels of wine from ceremonial water water that was meant for ceremonial washing he made wine out of it and some people argue that this was not really wine this was a kind of grape juice but if you look at the story itself the master of ceremonies or in our term the party planner said that it was good wine the party planner said normally the host would serve the cheap wine first and then when everyone's drunk they'd serve they, they'd serve sorry they'd serve the the good wine first and then when everyone's drunk they would serve the cheap wine whereas the party planner said to the host when Jesus had made this good wine the party planner said why did you keep the good wine for last in other words Jesus made wine that was so good it should have been served first uh, the practice being that people would drink that good wine become drunk or at least tipsy enough where they would not be able to tell the difference between the good wine that's served at first and the cheap wine that's kept as a backup so obviously Jesus made real wine that's that was alcoholic uh, besides which Proverbs is full of admonishments not to be drunk with wine which means the wine mentioned in the Bible both New and Old Testaments was real wine alcoholic wine now they might argue that the alcoholic content is not as strong as wine today but nevertheless it was alcoholic and capable of intoxicating the drinker so to say that Jesus never drank or to say that the Bible admonishes against alcohol consumption 100% is not actually biblical certainly there are plenty of admonishments against getting drunk but the idea that alcohol is forbidden 100% is just not sustainable by the scriptural record itself I know many who choose to abstain from alcohol completely and really that's fine that's really that's your choice but you cannot shoehorn that into the scripture to say that it's a scriptural command to completely refrain from alcohol nevertheless I don't say this because I'm looking for an excuse to drink I hardly ever drink at all actually it's just I had to say something when when I see a, a statement like if your pastor says it's okay to drink find a new church eh. <laughs> that's that's just wrong that's just wrong in fact if your pastor says it's not okay to drink you might want to consider finding a new church this argument that drinking is not a sin unless it causes another to stumble and and so it's okay to drink but if someone gets stumbled because of your drinking then you shouldn't drink I have heard this argument before and It just doesn't carry water to me, nor does it carry wine. Um, Paul is the one that wrote this, I would call it advice, to say that if you have the right to drink, for example, 
although Paul was using the issue of eating food that had been offered to idols. If you have the right to eat food that's been offered to idols, but someone in your presence thinks that it's wrong to eat food offered to idols, then you have the right to not eat food offered to idols. This was Paul's admonishment, so as not to stumble the so-called weaker brother, the one who thinks that the inconsequential actually has a negative consequence. That's what Paul said. But yet, what happened was, when Paul and Peter were eating with Gentiles, that is, non-Jews, uh, in the early days of the church, and then some Jewish believers in Yeshua, or Jesus, showed up for a visit. Peter pretended not to eat with the Gentiles because that was wrong for a Jew to do during those days. Jews don't eat with Gentiles. So Peter pretended not to eat with the Gentiles, which he had been doing for the days before the Jewish believers of Yeshua arrived for the visit. What did Paul do? Paul didn't say to Peter, yeah, that's good. Pretend that you don't eat with the Gentiles so that these Jewish believers won't be stumbled, won't be offended. That's not what Paul did. What Paul did instead was he publicly chastised and scolded Peter for pretending. He scolded Peter and said, Look, when the Jews were not here, you were eating freely with these Gentiles. Now when the Jews are here for a visit, you are pretending not to eat with the Gentiles. So that's wrong. So quit it. Basically is what Paul said to Peter. So Paul did not approve of Peter, did not commend him for not eating with the Gentiles so as not to stumble the Jews. No. Paul reprimanded Peter for not doing what was right.